Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John Sisbidi, a true and welcome to Troy a Total War Saga, or as I will be consistently referring to it, Iliad Total War, because why not just, you know, mix all of my favourite things together? Why not just take classics and mix in some Total War? Oh, bloody hell yes. Managed to get my hands on this one a bit early, but very early indeed, so this isn't going to be like a full campaign or anything. All I've got access to is a bit of a test fight. So we could have a little look see at the units and discuss, yes, Bronze Age stuff, the Iliad, how all of this fits together. So welcome to the beaches of Troy. There's some lovely Greek ships over there and over there as well. And that is, well, okay, I can't say for absolute certain this is actually the plains in front of Troy itself. Don't actually know because, yes, the Trojan War didn't actually just take place in and around Troy. There was a lot of stuff happening in those 10 years. Greeks just nipping all around modern day Turkey, sacking all sorts of stuff. This might be Mysia, the city that Achilleus just sort of took by mistake because he thought it was Troy, but it wasn't. Yeah, Achilles, good warrior, not always the brightest bulb in the shed. And speaking of Achilles, there he is down over there. Because yeah, this is the army of Achilles we're going to be taking on the Trojans. And the Trojan War is a really interesting thing to try and, you know, turn into a total war game. Because absolutely, there's the Iliad, there's all the myths and whatever. But just in case you don't know this, there absolutely was a real historical city of Troy in roughly the same location as the myths do say. There was actually a real war somewhere around the 12th century BC in which, looking at the archaeological record, a big city, by the standards of the time anyway, was sort of burnt to the ground. So, uh, there's a myth, but there's also history going on here. And this game kind of sits in the middle, because it's trying to be a Bronze Age total war that's, you know, a little bit realistic, or as realistic as you can be when you're dealing with, like, you know, heroes and divine stuff and diddly diddly d. So uh, yeah, basically this is the Bronze Age Total War, the first time we've ever gone back this far. And one of the things about the Bronze Age is uh, that means you're not going to have too much in the way of cavalry in this part of the world. You'll have a little bit, but mostly it'll be used for transportation. In fact, I haven't seen this yet, but I would bet a good amount of dollars that, yeah, Greek heroes will be able to have uh, chariot mounts at some point, where they'll be able to choose to mount and dismount. Kind of like you do with horses in Three Kingdoms. Ten quid says that's going to be a thing sooner or later. But yeah, most horses are going to be tied to chariots. And oh my goodness, look at them 12th century chariots. They're so beautifully ugly. But yeah, for the most part, that means you're going to be dealing with a lot of infantry. Which means things feel a bit different here than how you might expect. Things are now a lot more distinct than they used to be. So uh, let me give you a really simple example here. Infantry is now divided up into three classes. Heavy, medium and light. So these lovely Thessalian marines here, they've got a speed of 55. Yeah, you can probably tell from the info panel, mechanically this game seems to work a lot like Warhammer 2 with uh, melee attack is chance to hit, melee defense chance to evade, all of that good stuff. So uh, yeah, very familiar to that. If you played Warhammer, you'll be right at home. But over on the other side of the field, say my opponents, yeah, they've got themselves some heavy Trojan spearmen. Obviously, they're going to be heavy. And as a result of that, their speed is only 28. So the difference in speed is huge. There's never been such a distinct difference between the different types of infantry because previously, cavalry filled that role. So when you're talking about light infantry in this game, just kind of imagine they're like small bipedal horses. Because they're kind of filling the role of cavalry in a way. And what's cavalry good for? Why flanking, of course. And that's precisely what this game seems to have a really heavy emphasis on. So uh, these guys aren't just fast enough to get around the back of enemy units. It's also where they're strongest. These guys are experts in flanking. Meaning they actually get bonus attack damage if they're attacking someone from the rear or the side. Now... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm not sure that's ever existed in Total War before as an actual bonus that a unit has access to. I mean, going right back to Rome 1, absolutely, you've got to check your line of fire so you're not shooting people in their shields, say. But I think this might be the first time a unit info panel has ever actually explicitly said bonus damage if you're flanking. So uh, these guys, you're going to be wanting to use their superior speed to get them round the back and side of your enemies and slam them right into the rear. So we're dealing with classic hammer and anvil stuff here. And if these light lads are going to be the hammer, we're going to be needing an anvil. 
And for that, we're going over to, yeah, the medium and the heavies here. And in the case of Achilleus, that's going to be his personal troops of legend, the Myrmidons. Now, you might be thinking at this point, John, what's a Myrmidon? Are they from Myrmidonia? I've never heard of this place. Um, no. Okay, sit yourself down, get yourself a glass of milk, because... Uh, this is one of the most weird stories in all of Greek mythology, and that's bloody saying something. So, once upon a time, Zeus was feeling horny, as he very, very often was. And on this occasion, he looked down on Asia Minor and saw the daughter of a minor river deity. Her name was Aegina, and basically, he just decided to do the thing that he always did in this circumstance, which is abduct her and take her to the other side of the world so no one would be able to find her. And thus he decided to set her down on a small island near Attica, which is where Athens is. And as a result of this cavorting, Aegina ended up pregnant. And Zeus decided at this point to do the most logical thing he could do, which is immediately abandon her, not take her back to her family, but instead rename the island that she'd been dumped on, Aegina, after her. Which I'm sure she was absolutely thrilled about. I'm sure she thought, yep, yeah, I've got a good deal out of this. And she had a son. Aeacus, and he became the king of Aegina. Don't ask how that happened. Apparently, like, the island was already populated, and he just became king somehow. Mythology doesn't really record that bit. And then, unfortunately, what happened is, um, Hera found out about the whole abduction and mortal pregnancy thing. She always finds out. And she responded in a very level-headed, sensible fashion, which is she nuked the island. She just unleashed a massive plague, or in some versions a dragon, possibly both at the same time, and killed everyone on the whole of Aegina, apart from Aeacus, who you'd think it'd be like the one person she wanted to kill, but no, he was the one person that survived. And Aeacus prayed to Zeus and said, Dad, come on, this is this isn't cool. Can you please put this right? And Zeus said, yes, I know precisely how I'm going to fix this. I'm going to fix this with ants. And Iaka said, what? And Zeus said, yes, ants. I'm going to make ant people. Look at me making ant people. And basically, yes, ants started becoming people. And um, in some versions of this myth, they literally had six arms. Unfortunately, these people don't have six arms. They've only got two, but uh, what can you do? They've decided to go for the slightly more realistic portrayal. And Aeacus was apparently thrilled with his new ant people subjects. Or rather, he said he was thrilled, but he was probably terrified. Because if that's what Zeus does when he's trying to help you, just imagine what he does when he's annoyed. So, Aeacus basically kept being king of the ant people, and he had a son, Peleus, who got married to Thetis. They had a child, and that child was Achilleus. So, Achilleus, kind of by descent, is the ruler of the ant people. So, yes, that's, that's what Myrmidons are. They're literally ant men. If you translate Myrmidon, it basically just means ant men. So, these are the ant men, and they're supposed to be really good fighters because... They're like human ants, and ants are really good fighters, which I guess they are. So yes, that's that's what a Myrmidon is. Aren't you glad you know that? And they are seriously hardcore, these guys, by the way. These are the elites of Achillea. So as a result of that, they are unbreakable. They will fight to literally the last man, making them effectively the perfect hammer for good old-fashioned classic hammer and anvil tactics. We've also got a handful of, yeah, just basic uh, javelin skirmishers uh, over on one side. And yeah, we got ourselves a few uh, good old bits of uh, charioteering over here. And some cavalry. You don't see too much cavalry in this game. But yeah, these guys, officially savage centaurs. So uh, they're not actually centaurs. They don't actually have mythological creatures. And so these are just like, you know, wild barbarians who are very comfortable on their horses. Maybe from the steps or something. Not 100% sure the game's ever going to be 100% specific on that bit. So, yeah. We got ourselves a bit of cavalry and chariots on one side. Some skirmishes on the other. Let's flip and go. Because, yeah, this is basically the uh, the baby's first introductory tutorial battle. And, of course, don't forget Achilleus himself. So, uh, yeah, we'll be dealing with a bit of stuff from him. Let's see what's coming at us, though. So, obviously, we've got uh, Hector coming this way. Though, as I say, it might not be a Hector. Achilles might just be assuming it's Hector. Probably isn't Hector. This probably isn't even Troy. So, uh, yeah, that's something Achilles does. Because, yeah, the advantage he's got here is in range. He's got slingers that can significantly outrange my javelin guys. So, uh, we'll need to be careful of that. Right, okay. 
I think I see what we need to do here. You guys, draw yourselves up as thin as you can. All right, just get yourselves into a good position there. Everybody else, just start moving forward. Start moving around. And very specifically, yes, start getting the cavalry moving out uh, in one direction or another. Let's just get them off to one side. These guys need to cover as much ground as they can. I'm pretty confident just, you know, canonically, if it comes to it, Achilleus can take Hector. There's a whole book of the Iliad about it. He most definitely can. So uh, in comes a bit of Sling of Fire. But these guys are shielded. Just like in uh, Warhammer 2, that means they've got a good chance to just block range damage. That should be absolutely fine. You guys just start moving in this direction. And here you start seeing the problem with uh, heavy troops, or in this case, medium. Their speed is... Actually, their speed's not terrible. That's not terrible speed, all things considered. Proper heavy units would be a lot flippin' slower. But yeah, it's much more easy to start moving around these guys uh, with the light troops. And this is precisely what I wanted to see. You are a bit too far back, by the way, but that's all absolutely A-OK. -okay. You guys, start moving forward. Javelin guys, skirmish mode off. You start moving forward too. So what I want to do now is try and pin this line in place as fast as possible. By the way, they've also got a Minotaur. Sorry, should have mentioned the Minotaur. It's not a real Minotaur. Instead, it's just like a 10-foot tall barbarian who enjoys dressing up as a Minotaur. He's just really into cosplay. This is kind of like a hero in Warhammer 2. Because, yeah, he's one guy on his own, but he's still got like, you know, 12,000 hit points. So... Yeah, this is like a Warhammer-style uh, hero right here. So those are kind of showing up in this game in a way. And one final choice we've got to make here before we commit. These here Myrmidons, they've got themselves something fun, which is uh, just like in Three Kingdoms, there was a bunch of different formations you could use. In this game, units have different modes of operating. So right now, these guys have got themselves, yeah, one shield and one spear. Shield in one hand, spear in the other. But I can say no. Go into your alternative attack mode, please. If I do that, they gain a big pile of charge bonus. They gain more melee attack. They gain more speed. Basically, they're going to put their shield onto their back and go over to two-handed with a spear. So they're going to be stronger, faster, more effective. But it means they're going to lose a whole lot of melee defense. They're going to hit harder, but they're going to die faster. For me today, that's not what I need them to do. Because what I want them to do is be as defensively strong as possible. But it gives a bit of flexibility to the different units. So uh, all of you guys are just going to start charging forward, please. Try and pin these guys in place as fast as you can. Now, admittedly, there's a couple of units over here that aren't going to be actually caught up by the main line. So uh, you guys are solid enough. You guys just start moving forward to up towards top of the hill. You guys need to start making your way around over here. You guys just keep moving over here. That's fine for the time being. Yeah, everyone else is now going to be moving in. So we're going to start committing right here. Achilles can move forward. Some of these guys have got like little uh, javelin things they can toss while they're just throwing in. That's all absolutely spectacular. So my troops will hold up for the time being. But now, now we need to get into position. Cavalry. Get round over here, hit the slingers, take them out please. You guys over here, ah, you're trying to chase down the cavalry, well that's a waste of time, you're never going to catch them. So what we're going to do instead, is we're going to start bringing my flanking lads and slam them straight in the back. And for infantry, these guys move very, very fast indeed. So you guys get over here, you guys get over here. Achilles hasn't even committed yet, and uh, yeah, in a matter of seconds, uh, they're already starting uh, to fall apart. This is now the center of the battle. Get everything right in here, and yeah, my troops are going to stand and fight. That's absolutely beautiful. The charities never even got involved. Uh, the slingers have already been chased off. There's more slingers over here. They can be taken care of too, but now we've just created a great big kill box, and in a matter of seconds, that's over. As I say, this was Baby's first battle just to, you know, introduce you to what's going on in the game if you've never played a Total War game before. So as a result of that, the flanking forces have just come in. They've knocked it all over. There's a couple of heroes left here, but I think Achilles can uh, 
he can handle that. That's not going to be too much of a problem, to be perfectly honest. You just go and take out the giant bull man, please. That's not going to be an issue. There's still a handful of troops uh, hanging on here. So, yeah, deploy some of my beautiful Myrmidon swordsmen over in this direction. That's just spectacular. Everything seems to be going pretty well. You're running. You're not actually shattered yet. Get in over here. You guys have seen off this. Where did the chariots go, by the way? Oh, they're stuck in combat. They shouldn't be. They're good for a charge, but they're not good at, you know, sustained combat. You guys, get over here and yeah. At this point, we're just gonna charge in and job done. Alright, so that was easy mode right there. That was lovely and easy. Let's make things a bit more interesting. Let's do this once more, but let's do it properly. So I've moved the game on to uh, hard mode and... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's not kidding. Not sure I'm going to be able to win this one, but we'll give it a flipping go. So same deal again, but now I've got a lot more troops and so does Hector. And in particular, Hector's going to have really big, heavy, strong defensive troops. So uh, taking them on one-on-one -on -one with the front line, terrible idea. We're going to have to flank properly. So I've got myself a plan. So I've divided my army up into a handful of groups. Over here on the right, obviously we have got ourselves our fast moving forces. We got ourselves chariots, we got ourselves the cavalry. Over here, I've got myself my skirmishing forces, my fastest groups right here. So speed 55, speed 46. These guys are technically light infantry, but they do have, yeah, three ammunition for a throwable, which is not bad. They're very fast, they're very good and responsive, but being light, they've got a very useful ability. They can hide in scrub and forest. That's what this is in front of me. It's a new type of, like, uh, battlefield thing. So you can move light troops invisibly, like they're stalking in Warhammer, basically all the time as long as they're inside this scrub. So I can get my javelins uh, snuck up to Hector's line relatively effectively, which is good because we know he's going to have the range advantage. I believe in the hard mode battle, it's not slingers anymore. It's going to be uh, proper archers. I've certainly got javelins, so he's going to outrange me. So uh, using this scrub to just sneak my javelins up a bit, that's going to be good. I've got myself two units of my myrmidons, my beautiful, sexy ant men. So obviously, what we want for them is, uh, yeah, they're just going to be stretched as wide as they can go. Because they will not break, literally. They will fight to the last man, so... Uh, Basically, we can just stretch them thin and catch as many Trojans as we can at the same time. Because these guys will give a good account of themselves. Over here, we have got my secondary frontline troops. These guys are not experts at flanking. These guys are like uh, heavy spearmen. But they're not unbreakable. I can't afford to have them be stretched quite as thin as this. Because uh, they will break. And particularly, yeah, these guys at the back here. Basic spearmen. We might just... Uh, Hold them back to throw them in wherever we need trouble. Just keep them back as reinforcements. Achilles, keep him close by to the front. We got ourselves some champions of Pythia here. Yeah, these are all spearmen. These guys are actually a club. So, uh, yeah, they've got some lovely clubbing units. Slow, lose stamina quickly, severely affected by terrain penalties. But good at prolonged combat. Effective against chargers like these guys and over here. This is where we have got the hammer It's not much of a hammer, but here we go flanking attack improved right here, which is solid now These guys technically don't actually have flanking attack improved So I'm guessing they're experts in flanking just because of their high speed, but that's fine They'll still be pretty useful and basically my plan is uh, I'm gonna push everything up the right That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna break up the right and then we're just gonna wrap them up we're gonna toss javelins at them we're gonna have horses and chariots trying to take out the archers then come slamming into the front line we've got these guys they're just gonna bull rush anything that's in front of them turn around and hit over here also we're gonna be needing to use uh, achilles mugs we didn't really bother during the last battle because we didn't need to but uh we're gonna need him to do his stuff on this occasion because he's got abilities he's got the blood of heracles meaning he can just basically give himself rage rage is a meter that kind of works a bit like say 
magic in Warhammer 2. It's a meter that just fills up over time. He can fill up his own meter with his abilities. It just fills up if he just gets involved in the fighting, which is great. And then he spends it on various abilities. So, for example, yeah, Terrify. He can use 75 Rage, it's out of 100, so that's like a huge part of his meter, to terrify an opponent, reducing morale, reducing melee defense, and just terrifying them for 25 seconds too. Or he can make himself an awful lot stronger in a couple of different ways. Though, yeah, the ultimate ability does actually make him go berserk, which is very appropriate for Achilles, because, you know, there is a bit of the old blood frenzy about him. Or he can issue a divine challenge to Hector. If the situation is right, we might wish to do that. Yep, there's our problem. This time Hector's bringing, you know, the big lads, the proper ones. Guards of Troy, but more importantly, uh, champions of Troy, the elite of the elite. 100 armor, tons of morale, slow. Slow as anything, only 28, but melee defense of 60, which is uh, terrifying, and they hit bloody hard too, so... Uh, Need to watch out for the elites, together with uh, the archers, Hector himself, of course. So yeah, he's got the range. There's Captain Cosplay over at the back. That's no problem at all. Bit of chaff over out on the flank, though. That kind of works, actually. That might work for me. The crucial thing is the Thessalians. All right, they're my flankers. They must be allowed to sweep up the main line. If they can't do that job... This ain't gonna fly, which is why there's so much in front of them to try and make sure they do. So, move forward. I don't want this battle line moving much beyond what it is right now. Move everyone into this lovely, lovely a bit of cover for all my skirmishes and light troops. Yeah, they're firing arrows on the Myrmidons. That's fine. They've got shields. You have... Yeah, you've got shields too. Okay, these are good targets. Right now, this is pretty much as good as it's going to get. Some chaff is flanking at the side, but it's nothing too dramatic, really. You should not be there. Please get out of those spears. That is not where you should be. Right, you, make your way over towards these guys. You, make your way over here. They're pushing forwards, and we've got ourselves a lot of fire coming in on their troops right over here. Okay, this works, but bear in mind, yeah... They've not got much in the way of uh, ammunition. These guys aren't going to be able to keep firing all day. And uh, right now they're firing at the front of the Guards of Troy. They're doing a little bit of chip damage, but they're not really getting uh, the kills. So, here's what we need to do. I'm going to basically sacrifice the Iginian runners. They're just going to go forward and take out the Trojans, or at least keep them busy for as long as they can. And while that's happening, yeah, Hector's chosen are going up against my Myrmidon Swordsman. That's pretty much the best unit I've got in the entire army. So everybody is now just going to move forward and charge. That's what we are going to be doing. There's a couple of troops over here. You just go and keep them busy. All right, that's all absolutely A-OK. -okay. Hector's over here. Achilleus is going to, one, activate Blood of Heracles because that just gives him bonus rage. That just means he can start chopping more efficiently. And you're going to blunt the charge of these champions of Troy. All right, because they're going up against stuff that they would annihilate. So Achilles is going to keep them busy. While these troops are at the rear, that's good stuff. You guys need to, yeah, engage and then we just start basically pelting them with everything we have got. Then we've also got, yeah, the big lads. Be ready to move in. Light swordsman, same deal. Start moving up the hill. Be ready to start doing this. Just get around over here. Get around the back of them. All right. It is crucial that you get around the back of these guys. And here we go. You, get into the side of the guards of Troy. You, get into the back or the side of these guys. You, get on Hector's Chosen. I want you to turn and toss all of your things into them. It's not the best angle in a way, but it'll do. Uh, those archers have been more or less taken care of. Keep on keeping on. And yeah, now we have got javelins uh, raining down on Hector's Chosen, which is having uh, an impact. Achilleus over here is up to maximum rage meter. He could immediately try and pull Hector into a one-on-one -on -one duel, but no. No, 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 no. I think we're fine for the time being. Ares's rage... So, plus 150% weapon damage, unbreakable, but berserk. Now, let's just keep things simple for the time being. Weapon damage up 30%, but better chance to hit. All right, go for some of that. 
take out the champions of Troy. That will do some good stuff. We've also got to salvage. Yeah, you guys are over here. You guys get into a position to start flanking. The Minotaur doesn't really know where he wants to be. You're taking care of all of this nonsense for the moment. And most importantly, yeah, the flanking team. Right, because of this weird angle, you come over here and flank into this position. You get over here and flank into those heavy chosen spears. You have got basically no. You're already out of uh, out of ammo. Okay, you turn over here and hit these guys. That's champions of Troy. This is not the best angle, to be perfectly honest. But Hector's chosen. Yeah, I'll take it. All right, you guys are getting over here. It's time for my flanking troops to start hitting some units in. You know the flank. That's their job, especially as oh these guys are. That's, that's already collapsed. Okay, back off, back off, back off. You guys are already out of everything. So you guys, get over here. Hit Hector's Chosen. The Javelins have actually basically offloaded most of their Javelins already. They've kind of done their job. Uh, what's going on over here? You guys have pretty much seen off all of the archers. How's the front line going? It is going okay, if not spectacular. Uh, what have you got? You could terrify a target. You know what? Activate Ares' Rage. That's absolutely fine. So he's just going bananas right now. He's just going bananas. Also, there's a Minotaur right there. So he's going to be very effective at murder. But, you know, there's going to be downsides to that. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. It's time to pick some weak points right over here. This over here. This is a weak point. That's Trojan Defenders. They're not spectacular. That's not going to do much in the good stuff at all. Thessalian Laddie Lads. Okay. You guys, I need you to get around the back of Hector's Chosen. And we need to start making some progress on this flank sooner rather than later. And just look how fast they go. You've got to love those light troops. Right in the rear. And they do not like that one bit. Hector's Chosen or not, they do not appreciate this nonsense. Right, you, get in over there, toss whatever you've got left into Hector's Chosen. You've not got a great line, but you'll be able to do something at the bare minimum. I mean, they're Hector's Chosen. They've got to be, like, you know, moderately important. There's Hector. He's seen off some spear fighting. He's not seen off spear fighting Myrmidons. The spear fighting Myrmidons are chasing these guys. You, keep Hector busy. You, Go into, you can't go into Berserk again. Just go into Cleave mode in that case. Take out all of this. And you guys should not be long range committed. Yeah, actually, you guys came in and did a really, really good job. So, Hector right now is just sort of busy, which is great. We've got a little corner over here, which is not spectacular, to be perfectly honest. Right, Cavalry, get back over here. Ram the champions of Troy. They're not going to enjoy it, and neither am I, to be perfectly honest. But, you know, it will do some good work. Just get in there, and then as soon as you're done with that, get straight back out again. We just want to be cycle charging over and over. Honestly, you guys may as well get in over there. Those guys, Heavy Trojan Spearmen, do not seem to be doing great. We've got a unit over here that's apparently not doing anything right now. So you guys get out. And get back in. If we can take out the champions of Troy, we should be in good shape. Achilles is actually in very good shape. Hector's in good shape too. In fact, Achilles is a little bit on the weak side. Uh, Achilles, you get over here. Help out these guys if you'd be so kind. How are you guys doing? In fact, you know what? Activate uh, Terrify if you'd be so kind. And that should hopefully be enough to come on. Get them off the field. Get them off the field. Minus 10 morale. Please break, you stupid bastards. Broken. I'm seeing broken. Good. Finish them off. You, get over here and activate uh, Ares' Rage. Because you are a one-man flipping war machine. Over here, things looking okay, if not spectacular. Uh, pull out what's left of the chariots and the cavalry. But yeah, I didn't want to leave them in that long, to be perfectly honest. You guys getting over here. These are Trojan Warriors. They're not spectacular. You did not manage to get yourselves out yet, did you? No, chariots get a bit... They get bogged down. Get over here. Hit the champions of Troy. There's a little pocket over here. This isn't going great. We're holding them in place, but it's... 
It'll do. The Myrmidons are the bare minimum because that Unbreakable will keep Hector busy. I need you guys to find a way to extricate yourselves. You guys need to get out too. I mean, there's... Yep, they're running. That's good. Okay, this is fine. And... Ah! Achilles has actually taken on this guy right now. Use the blood of Heracles to get some stuff up. Uh, yeah, soon as you hit 50, we'll be able to give you a, a bit of a boost. And boom. Right, that'll make you a bit stronger. The problem is, that bull is going to seriously weaken Achilles, which is not good. Guards of Troy, Trojan Warriors coming in. Let's just, yeah, engage. Hit him in the side. They do not appreciate that one little bit. No, that was supposed to be the horses, actually. You, stay and fight. You're doing all right. Uh, you guys, head over here and hit the champions of Troy in the rear. Just bounce backwards and forwards. Hector's busy at the minute, which is quite frankly good news, but just look, those champions of Troy are really nice. Right, get back over here, hit the guards of Troy. Achilles is actually, Achilles is going to lose to some random bandit chief, which is just embarrassing for him, but uh, Achilles needs to turn and run. Achilles needs to, I think it might be too late. Achilles needs to get the flip out of dodge. Uh, okay, we need to get rid of you. These guards of Troy at minus 17. Right, renowned Pythian Spears. I need you to do what Achilles couldn't. Oh dear, poor old Achilles. He ain't doing so hot today. Uh, you guys, you're exhausted. And what does that mean precisely? Probably you've been affected by some form of, yeah, penalty from someone else. Uh, okay, we've got guys over here. Ah, my troops have finally collapsed on that front. But I have got relatively fresh champions of Pythia coming in. I just need to find an angle of approach. Hector's continually doing healing magic. Achilles is not in great shape. The chariots have actually managed to get themselves out, which is good. Right, uh, try and hit the champions of Troy. I think we might lose this one anyway, despite the fact that we did get some really good flanks in. Uh, what we need to do is actually, no, we need to use supporting abilities. Hector's basically at full health, which is not good. Uh, what we need to do is... Oh, my rage is empty because I've not been in combat enough. The rage of Achilles, it turns out, has has, uh, has emptied. And the horses are fleeing too. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, get the chariots back out. They just don't seem to have quite enough impact. These guys are weaker. I just don't know whether we've got enough. And that is it. You've lost a unit. That was the last of the Myrmidons. Unfortunately, the Myrmidons were keeping Hector busy. Not any longer. Now over here... Uh, the Minotaur is... Uh, he's very weak. Okay, Achilles, at the bare minimum, could you maybe finish off a Minotaur? Actually, how is your... What do you need for Terrify? You need 75 for Terrify. Uh-oh, I feel like Hector's coming for Achilles. It's book 22, but in reverse, damn it. Okay, hang on. Just stop for a second. What have I got here? I've got a couple of units who have come back over here. And in particular, I've got 20 Cav. Against 40 champions of Troy, that's not much. But we are literally doing book 22 in reverse right now. Terrified Achilles is basically just uh, running around the outskirts of Troy. Desperately trying to avoid Hector. So we've got that backwards. Uh, okay, you know what? Champions of Troy, terrify them. Hit them with the terror and then hit them with a cavalry charge. Maybe, just maybe, everybody... Get in over here. Literally everybody that's left. Just get in there. And maybe that'll be enough to push him into a break. If we're really lucky. I'm sending in a weakened Achilles. This is dangerous. But it's the best bet I've got. How much health has he actually got right now? 400 hit points. Which is fine. But it'll do. Get in. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, divine challenge. Yes. Activate cleave. I think we might have ourselves a mass break here. Looks to me like a mass break. Guards of Troy get in there. No, there's some units still holding on. Hector's chosen. Still holding in there. Cavalry, get yourselves. No, the cavalry broke. And I think shattered too, unfortunately. We've got more piling in. Oh, it's Captain Bull Rush. Achilles, get out of there. Where's Hector? He's naffed off over here to deal with some random Pythian spears. Right, anything that's left, get... Get back in. We've actually got some okay units because I was paying really, really poor attention to units that had rallied. So I've actually still got some units who are vaguely okay. Trojan Warriors. This has just turned into a scrum. 
at this point. But I have got one last trick up my sleeve. And that is Aristea. Get enough rage, do enough abilities. You can activate Aristea. Armor up, melee attack up, your vigor's frozen, you're unbreakable, no cooldowns for any abilities. Basically, you become the best possible version of yourself. Hector has already done it, but unfortunately, Hector has got... He's got a healing ability, which is why, yes, he's much more defensive. Because, you know, he's literally the defender of Troy, so fair enough. Uh, so he's at full health, and I do not have any way of getting my health back. Because, uh, yeah, that Minotaur made a bit of a mess of my face. But... If we're going to go down, we're going to go down in a blaze of glory. Because that's Iliadic right there. Activate the Aristea. And look at that. Perfect guaranteed morale. For 60 seconds, I am terrifying. Which is lovely. Uh, though it doesn't reset cooldowns by the Luke Siobhan. Come on, Achilles. I believe in you. You are... No, those troops are breaking. We've got some troops over here. You're doing what you can. There's a tiny, tiny handful. There's a good number of the champions of Pythia right here. You're chasing off those guys. Those guys have shattered. Right, Achilles, you've got 30-odd seconds left. Get over here. Destroy the Minotaur. All right. Get Rage up as best you can. And, uh, yeah, uh, those guys might recover. I don't care. Minotaur's fleeing. Those guys are fleeing. You're broken. Okay, it's come down to Achilles versus Hector. There's some units over here trying to come back. Aristea has worn off. I think you only get it once a go. Uh, in which case... Oh, activate uh, Terra. Oh, I was too late. The rage just drained too fast. I wasn't in combat. Uh, heavy Trojan Spearman. You guys cannot be thrilled about taking on Achilles, right? And nope, they're straight off. They're very tired. Achilles himself is, he's exhausted, everyone's exhausted, everyone's dead actually. The Minotaur is actually back at this point. These guys are fleeing. Turn your attention to these guys. Right now it is, uh, we're slowly wearing down Hector. The problem is he's keeping his rage up by fighting and he's keeping his health up by healing. That's his rage meter at the top there. So you're seeing off those guys, those guards of Troy, nothing. They'll shatter momentarily. Right, it's time for Achilles to try and basically, yes, win but die gloriously. And what could be more Iliadic or Achillean than dying gloriously by the walls of Troy? Then again, the one more thing we could do would be like, you know, winning as Achilles. And I think we might just be able to pull it off yet because we can just bog Hector down in chaff. Just completely clog him up with chaff. Okay, the Minotaur is... Oh, the Minotaur's down. Well done, Pythians. Uh, you guys uh, get over here and now just move around in this territory. Okay, we got you guys over here. Did you just break? Why are you breaking? You just won! Okay, you guys get over here and there is... Uh, there's Hector and that's it. All right, I need... Uh, I need Hector's Chosen. Broken, please. So, engage... Uh, and then there's been some form of big shout. The shout, good for their morale. Hector is buffing them. But in comes swift-footed Achilles. He's only got speed of 32 right now, which is not that swift-footed. He should really have swift defeat. This is a very important part of his character, Creative Assembly. Please fix. Okay, 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 okay. He is doing something. Yeah, at this point now, what's left? There's some more spears. I might actually win this. This is ludicrous, but I think I might. They're all shattered. They're all shattered. In the end, okay, so glorious heroic Achilles is... Oh, this is very Iliadic too. So basically, um, the rest of the Greeks are going to fight and die to glorious Hector. And Achilles is just going to stand here and not get involved because he's talking about his girlfriend and or boyfriend. So basically, yes, this is, this is perfectly the Iliad. I've accidentally created the Iliad and it looks to me like Hector is starting to struggle here. Morale minus three. I think that must be army losses that's kicking in which I assume is still a thing and boom. There we go. Okay at this point um, Achilles you may now run in and murder Hector and pretend it was you as did most of the work. Oh swift footed Achilles with his flashing spear something something wine colored ocean. Okay point of mythic accuracy swift footed Achilles is faster than Hector. 
So, uh, yep, he's going to be able to catch him up and just stab him in the back, which is great. There you go, you stupid dick. And that looks like, yeah, healing cap and... No, no, get... Get back after him, please. Get back after him. Oh, there it is. The final blow. Achilles takes out Hector. And unfortunately, he can't actually tie him to a chariot and drag him round the walls in order to desecrate the corpse as much as he would like to because I left my chariots in sustained combat for a bit too long. And uh, as a result of that, yeah, the um, the chariots fled the battlefield. So actually, we've just done the Iliad a favour because now Achilles can't commit hubris that annoys the gods. So thumbs up all round. Also, I wasn't joking about the ant thing. Seriously, it's even Achilles's banner. All right, once more, but this time we are noble Hector defending our home of probably and presumably Troy. So, yeah, unfortunately, the army I've got is not as good as the one I was just fighting, and the one Achilles is going to have is going to be much better. But, yeah, the thing about Hector is I'm going to be wanting to play more defensively. His main ability, which is super cheap, in fact, it doesn't even cost any rage whatsoever. Just once every 30 seconds, he can just start replenishing the hit points of friendly targets. So we can just take his most hardcore elite frontline units and keep them going. And unlike Achilles' shout, which is terrifying, his shout is encouraging, which is very, very nice indeed. He can also, yeah, provide speed, armor, piercing damage, and charge bonus up. He can make himself a little bit on the stronger side. And he can make himself both unbreakable and immortal, which is bloody useful, I'll say. But you may notice I've got a little bit less that's good at, you know, dealing with flanking. So I'm going to have to play a lot more defensively. I've got a healer. I've got a handful of good defensive units. I've got some archers. But I'm lacking in the big, flexible mobility of Achilles. Then again, these here spear fighters, they're pretty flimsy, but they're chargers. So I might want to try and use them as flankers if I can. Aha, there's a bit of a cliff here. That's rather useful. Okay, let's use some of that because actually, yeah, there's a lot more of a terrain focus going on here. With uh, the bits of grass, you can hide things in, more cliffs. The battlefields are going to be a bit more interesting and dynamic. No sign of bridges yet, but we live in flipping hope. So, don't need to guard this flank. Nothing's coming up over here. Some good Trojan defenders drawn up pretty deep there. Elites right over here. And then we just stagger and box back in. Archers. Uh, yeah, we don't need to skirmish. That's all absolutely A-OK. -okay. And ideally, we'll get these guys around and about charging into anything over here. So, uh, this is going to be a nightmare. Because, yeah, there's going to be a lot more flipping Myrmidons than we saw previously. And, okay. That's where the... That's where the cavalry is. Now, the thing about the cavalry is it's not got great armor. And the chariots hit hard, but they're squishing. So, uh, perfect wilder. I'm going to bring myself the archers over here. If we might be able to, yeah, take out his calf before it even gets to us, that'll be a significant blow uh, to him. Okay, Achilles has shown some uncharacteristic uh, patience. He's drawn up here and he's waiting. Okay, well that's fine because uh, I outrange him. Alright, all I need to do is bring my archers to uh, the front and gently push forward. Then again, that's going to be dangerous. How close am I to being in range? Honestly, it's not so far. That's not so bad at all. You know what? All we're going to do is we're going to extend the box a little bit forward. Just extend the box... Bring the archers forward a bit. We can probably land some hits on him without being at risk. Because we have got the range advantage. So here we go. Archers, prepare to let off a volley. And uh, yeah, those cav are not going to enjoy that one little bit. Because oh yeah, that's, that's the thing. You guys are in trouble now. Yep, yeah, he's decided he doesn't like that, and now he is moving. They've decided, hang on, no, we can't just wait for them on this hill. So they're going to start coming forward, but we've really badly damaged them, which is good. Someone got a shot off, possibly a javelin just temporarily got into range. Fall back, they're now moving. Yeah, there's some elite troops over on the flank here, but they're not getting up this cliff. And there are 
really should have some uh, some spears over here. Okay, uh, bring one of the spear groups. No, not you. Bring one of these spear lot over here. Just so we've got some spears ready to deal with a possible charge. Are they trying to take out my lads, by the way? Maybe don't want to do this. You know what? Fall back a little bit. The amount of ammo these units have got is not spectacular. They're coming in right now. Okay, it's time for you guys to start flanking. Oh, they're ready to catch my flank. You guys get over here. You guys get over here. You guys get over here. I need these guys, my chargers, to be in a good position. Okay, this is fine. Oh, there's way more here than what I was expecting. Those guys were hidden. Okay, well played. Uh, so they've just actually got their flanking unit right around my side. But I can just charge into them. I'm going to lose, but oh, bloody hell. And oh, there's... Oh, this is... This is not good. This is why we brought the spear fighters over. This is fine. You guys just lay down the fire. Uh, yeah, you guys, excluding the uh, the spears, fall back slightly. Send the spears after the chariots. They're losing health fast. Uh, Hector, I've completely forgotten... <laughs> Okay, I completely forgot everything there. Right, get in over here. Hector, you need to get some rage up because seriously, it's time for you to, you know, heal your unit. There we go. These guys need some healing. Get in over here. Help out as best you can. Use your divine focus, which is great. And now just start smashing these guys because right now you're not doing anything. Okay, this is where the stress is. So this is where I'm putting the uh, the backup troops right now. And I'm also deploying Captain Cosplay right over here. Should have really used him to blunt the charge. This has gone horribly wrong. Okay, I feel like Achilles is going two for two on this occasion. Then again, this flank. This flank's going pretty well. Because that is some Pelagic Thessalians. That's more flanking troops. They're in trouble. You're in trouble. You take out these guys, and now, now we can start getting round the back. We've not got much in the way of arrows, but we've kept our archers alive. You guys get over here. Captain Cosplay's taking care of this. He's got himself special abilities. In fact, he's actually got a special Savage Roar. It's like uh, the big shout that, what is it, the Vanguards can do in Three Kingdoms. And a special Bull Rush ability. Those guys are, are these Myrmidons, because yeah, those are Myrmidons. So there's no point shouting at them. Their morale is always perfect. So that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, you guys taking care of this. My archers are now massively exposed. Lay down some fire over here. These guys have actually kept these guys busy. Renowned swordsman at the bare minimum can get over here. Captain Bullrush should really actually move himself somewhere more appropriate. These, uh, yeah, Mervodon swordsmen are a bit of trouble. This guy is fast. So what he should do is activate his Bullrush ability. And then as soon as that's ready to go, charge him in, please. Just get him over here, and he will be hitting with a great big lovely swish. And just knocking a bunch of people over. Activate your Savage Roar. We're hoping for a bit more of a knockover. And that is a double break right there, just like Vanguard used to do all the time in Three Kingdoms. Lovely ability. Right, now that, that's looking good. This is looking a bit on the dicey. Does anyone know what happened to the archers? Where'd the archers go? I think they ran out of ammo, so they just committed themselves. Which is fair enough, quite frankly. Okay, seriously. You guys take care of that. There's one group. Yeah, the chariot's now broken. There's a handful over here not doing anything. You guys hit those guys. This is going better than I expected, quite frankly. Uh, okay, I can be immortal and whatever. Yes, activate the shout. Keep my troops going. For the time being. Achilles is in trouble. Okay, Hector's having a much easier time of it, actually. Never mind. This is going fairly well. I tell you what. Uh, giant bull man. Please just get over here. And everybody just bull rush Achilles. Uh, I don't have the ability to duel him, by the way. That's his special ability. He can pull me into a duel. I can't choose to duel him. And I believe that's precisely what he's doing. I think I'm in a duel right now. So, uh, yeah, do what we can. We've got some rage building. You know, I think this is going pretty well, so we can just get in on this duel right here. Everyone's giving us a bit of a polite distance. Not as much of a polite distance as we got in Three Kingdoms. I feel like everyone's getting a bit uh, close, actually. But this is all fine. Achilles seems to be going pretty well. My rage is going. It's holding steady. 
for the time being. You guys shouldn't be chasing those guys off. You should be getting over here. These archers are... Wow, you're going to finish off some Myrmidon swordsmen. Well done. Well flipping done. You've only got little knives and they're the elite of the elite. But the ant men have been defeated. There's a couple of javelin throwers, but they haven't got anything. You guys are just... I don't know why you guys are over there, but please come back. Actually, um... Actually, keep going. You're leading some spear fighting Myrmidons away. That's really good news. Right. Get over here. Hit these guys. Get over here. Hit these guys. Does anyone know where, um... Where Achilles is? I think he's dead. Which is really good news. Uh, okay. So that's got to be a bit of a blow. Yeah, it feels like this battle's a lot easier on Hector's side. Achilles is a bit of a pain. But this has not been so bad. I mean, I say that there's... There's a lot of troops still here, uh, including... That's Myrmidon Swordsman. Okay, but Hector should be able to handle that, especially as Hector can. Just keep himself healed up. His heal ability is really, really damn nice. So he can just keep himself topped up. More coming in. But honestly, I feel like they're just throwing themselves into the self-healing meat grinder. Okay, Hector's starting to get a bit worn down here. I feel like actually we might be looking to no-score draw because unfortunately... A lot of what's left is Myrmidons, who will fight to the last. They will not break. You can't just rely on army losses to uh, get them done. I've got a couple of units coming back in, having previously broken. But Hector's cooldown on his healing is, you know, understandably quite long. And there's more, there's more showing up yet. Still, Captain Bull is actually doing very well. So he's just finishing off. I think that might be the last unit right there. One champion of Pythia going down. Okay, actually, I think we might... Just might be okay. Are you guys Myrmidons, by the way? Yep, you guys are Myrmidons. Get Captain Cosplay in over here. Hit him in the flank. And in he comes. Sadly, his shout is useless against these lads. And yeah, this group over here, we've now got them surrounded. So once you've got them on all sides, and normally that would be terrible for morale. These guys, they just don't care. But... Flanking, very powerful for just wearing them down. Be flipping you. Let's just check here. How good are the animations at, uh, you know, properly meeting each other? Do we feel like people are actually fighting? Are they just waving in each other's directions? Okay, they're doing a fairly good job of acknowledging each other. That's nice. I mean, you know, they kind of look like they're just play acting. But they're making an effort to try and have some matched animations. Well done. And with all my units just gathered together for one final push, yep, I can heal the entire army because it's a radius air of effect. So I've dropped it on the Minotaur and now literally everybody is healing up. They're taking damage at the same time, but they're still healing up, which is beautiful. So now we're just going to get in and enjoy the Minotaur having a bit of fun. Yep, he appears to be about, I don't know, what's that, eight feet tall because he's sort of... Uh, Crouched over right now, doing a very good job just knackering people. Absolutely flipping lovely. So yeah, I should point out, uh, just like Warhammer 2, units have fairly generous health pools, all things considered. So like, you know, a unit that might only have 90 odd men in it still has 11,000 hit points. So units will stand and fight for some time, meaning, yeah, your flanking and your morale, that's really, really important. And there we go. Last one goes down. That's a two for two victory for me. Quite frankly, I'm proud of myself because I've been speaking to uh, some of the other YouTubers that had access to this build. And uh, this was not an easy battle on hard mode. All right, especially Achilleus's. That was, uh, that was nasty. So, uh, okay, that's one to Achilleus, one to Hector. So probably the only way we can settle this is by murdering Patroclus and then running around the walls of Troy ten times. So, that's Troy a Total War Saga, or at least, you know, a very, very early sneak peek of it. Sorry, that's all I've got to share with you right now. I've not seen anything else myself. I've not had a chance to play the campaign. I've just played this one little demo. So, work in progress, obviously, still very much in development. It's an interesting one because you can kind of see the influences of Three Kingdoms, Warhammer, Thrones of Britannia. It feels like, yes, a very traditional Total War game in many ways. So, uh, I'll be really interested to see what the campaign has in store because the Saga games are traditionally the test grounds for, you know, weird, wacky, new ideas. But yeah, right now it feels like a fairly traditional Total War experience in some ways. And honestly, I can't give you a proper evaluation. I've only spent a little bit of time with this game. But I will say, I'm very much looking forward to bringing you a series where I can tell you all the wacky and weird stories of the Trojan War. That, at the bare minimum 
is very much worth looking forward to. So hopefully you join me for that whenever we can get that in play. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Troy at Total War Saga. Thank you very much and goodbye. This, this guy's enjoying that. This guy's enjoying his elephant a bit too much. In Fair Verona, we set our scene. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. They've managed to glitch inside one of the buildings. Elephants in the rear! And then oh, in come the chariots! Yeah.